Yes! Sneak King Assassin's Feed! Welcome to another episode of The Completionist. Now, a lot of you guys say that I don't give very many games bad ratings. Well, that's because I think that it's much easier to give a game a bad rating than it is to praise a game for its good qualities. And then there's games like this. What? We could get it with cheese on it. They have cheese in these things? I think there's there's bacon inside. Isn't bacon? There's there no bacon. No bacon. No bacon. Sneak King. Uh, you're not gonna say anything else? Sneak King. You know, you usually give an insightful opinion on the game, whether you've heard of it or not, perhaps a mini story. Sneak King. At one time, you could have bought it with a Whopper, and it would have been all right for four bucks. But Batman! Sneak King. See, it's not so easy, is it, Greg? Yep, right there with you, buddy. Now, for the sake of this review, I just want to let you guys know that there's not really any music to come from this game. There's only one track, so I'm going to be supplementing most of this review with music from other games. A few years ago, on the dawn of the new Xbox 360, Burger King wanted to try and create some buzz with gamers and their food. Hell, it's not uncommon that gaming and fast food companies would team up. They had N64s and McDonald's for years for all of us kids to play, and some of them still do. So, Burger King teamed up with Blitz Games to create three games based off of their mascot, The King. The King? That doesn't sound so- What's wrong with his face? Oh dear god! Nightmare! Yes, the king. One of the most hilarious yet creepy things to ever come from fast food commercials, let alone represent a chain-like mascot. Yes, you do have Ronald McDonald, the creepy clown, the jack-in-the-box dude, that's really a jack-in-the-box, and the star from Carl's Jr. But the king takes the Nobel Prize for most uncomfortable character in fast food. Except maybe that creepy old McDonald's moon. Three different games were created for a limited time promotion for the holidays. There's Pocket Bike Racers, which is essentially a Mario Kart clone starring the king, Big Bumpin', which consists of a few bumper car minigames starring the king as well, and last, and probably the most fleshed out and, quote, well-designed, the infamous Sneak King. Luckily for me, I only have one of the three. The premise of Sneak King is as follows. The king wants to make sure that the people of the world do not go hungry. So, he sets out on his mission to deliver various types of food from Burger King in an attempt to make everyone happy. The catch? He wants to surprise everyone so that he can become the best Sneak King ever, because it's such a competitive category. So, this is Metal Gear Solid with fast food? I think it's more like an Assassin's Creed of fast food. Ah yes, Assassin's Feed, the return of the king. Now, the biggest problem with this story, acknowledging that yes, there really isn't a story to begin with, is the fact that there is no villain. How about an evil man that deprives people of food with some type of food ray? I don't know, something, anything. Give us a reason to scare the crap out of people with food. Because right now, it doesn't make any sense. You're trying to make sense of this game? Look, if I'm going to review a game like this and imagine Wang Designers, I need to rationalize as much as I can when I'm playing it. It's a game about food. This game came out very close to the debut of the Xbox 360, and it was actually a pretty brilliant marketing decision for both Microsoft and Burger King. I remember the buzz for this game being pretty hot, and pretty much everyone at the time knew about it, especially if you watch TV because there were so many ads for it. We can assume Sneak King had mucho dinero backing it. That being said, there really isn't evidence of that when you're playing this game. The only thing within the game that's well designed is the king. He looks actually pretty great, scary and full of emotion, 
his actions are pretty fluid. The motion capture for his dancing reveals that they're pretty much saw all the way around. He looks like how he does in the commercials. That face is made of pure fear. Now on to everything else. It all just kind of sucks. The environments are extremely small and not very detailed. All the other character models look very generic. They are all just repeated throughout each level with slightly different clothes. Maybe they'll have a costume, like a... or some kind of hard hat or something. This game looks like it could run on the PlayStation 2, and no one would probably know the difference. Another weird aspect to report for this game is that when you beat a level and move on to the next one, you see these newspaper splash screens as if the king actually did something worthwhile. He just gave burgers out. Who cares what he did? It's like he won an award or something. All right, high hopes for the sound. Here we go. Spoiler alert. It, it, it blows, okay? There, there's one track, one song that just repeats throughout the entire game. There's four levels. Maybe a different, unique song for each one? Nope. One song, the whole game. Yeah, what if we used some Metal Gear Solid music? Assassin's Creed? Still sucks. The sound effects are extremely repetitive. Now a next-gen system like the 360 surely could be capable of some quality voiceovers, right? Sim noises. Gibberish. That's all we get. And I think I went crazy playing this game because everyone sounds like they're gagging. The developers even knew this game was going to be a bunch of crap, so they made fun of it with the commercials themselves, giving off this weird but hilarious 70s, 80s grindhouse horror film. There's got to be at least one redeeming quality for this game, right? Well, there kind of is. The game's intro. This game scared the poop out of me and Greg when we watched it. It went a little something just like this. Oh, Jesus. Oh. God, that is frightening. It's like he's real. <gasps> oh my god. Oh god, look at that face. Uh, I don't want a burger. I don't want the food. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't, don't give me anything. I don't I want, don't, no. I don't take food from no. strangers. Take it. I don't want it anymore. You take the burger. <laughs> take it. I don't, just get out. Oh god. Get out of my oh god, where'd yard. Go? Get out. Where'd he go? Get out. Where'd he go? Get out. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Here's where everything takes a horrifying turn for the even worse. Aggravation will be your mood as you venture forth. This game just feels like it goes on forever and not in a good way. This is not the Final Fantasy VII you're looking for. So essentially, you have to surprise people with food through missions. A hungry person will be selected at complete random. From there, you must feed them without getting caught, hence being sneaky. When they start being hungry, the meter starts at a green level. You want to wait until their hunger meter reaches a flashing red, and you want to be as close to them as possible. The closer you are, the more points you get. You have the classic golf swing meter bat that allows you to determine the level of flourish that you do. You can do a level 1 flourish, which can be the lowest and most boring of the three, all the way to level 3 where, well, the king just dances his ass off in a hilarious but kind of creepy manner. And you think this would not get old because it sounds awesome? No, it gets old pretty quickly, and it gets even more frustrating as you actually can't skip the dance, prolonging the missions even further for you. Depending on your score or time, you'll need to get an A ranking on every challenge to get the job done correctly. That all sounds kind of simple and somewhat fun, right? Wrong. No, it's not. Every person has a blue radar in front of them that is their line of sight. And if you get caught in this, you lose your chain bonuses, which raised by one after every surprise. This right here is one of the buggiest parts of the game. Sometimes the zones aren't accurate, sometimes the characters move so quickly that there's absolutely no way to avoid them. Also, if you start running, they automatically turn your way and fast. Boom. No way to get away from them. How can this get any worse? Do we need to choose a wedding dress for the king? 
Anyone want to comment on the fact that when you beat a mission, you bow and then they walk away? This is just creepy. Why is the king so stoked about giving a whopper? There's no one else around, and yet he bows. What is this game? What is this game? What is this game? In order to get an even higher score, you can surprise your victims from cool hiding spots. Places like trucks, trash cans, logs, even their own houses. That's right, their own houses. You can just flat out ignore their security system, go inside of their house, and wait till they'll get home, cause when they open the door, they're not gonna be mad at the fact that the king is giving them a burger, the fact that they broke into their house. No, they're gonna be surprised. They're gonna be totally okay with you delivering them the triple whopper. Now in most circumstances, you need to judge where the people are going to walk and hope to God that they walk next to the hiding spot. This means that you have to replay over and over and over again these missions to understand the walking patterns of each person and memorize them. And just watch how slowly the king moves when he's leaving this hiding spot. Just watch. All this time wasted. Oh, and of course, there's tons of glitches. Glitches with old man snitches. There's just too many. Clipping, seeing through walls. Apparently the king is a god who can float while attempting to get up ledges. He can also get stuck in this hole. Diablo has won. This is the end. End me now, Diablo. There is no cow level. Ooh. Real talk. I would be lying if I tried to say that all 80 missions are indeed different with the four wonderfully designed levels intact. I'm a liar. No, they are not. They are awful. They're all the same. It's so horrible. Especially this mission. Especially this mission. Especially this mission! Commence Angry Jihad Rant! So, as you guys know, I livestream a lot and I was live streaming this game in front of an audience. And when I got to the second level, there's mission 15, which requires you to make five deliveries to people solely in their backyards. Not too hard. In order to get an A ranking, you need to do it in one minute. Sounds simple, right? No, no, it's not simple. It's not simple. It picks people at complete random who just wander aimlessly. Which, by the way, why aren't these people at work? Who the hell populates this neighborhood all day without creating any stable income for themselves? It's broken. It's a broken mission for a broken game. It's so broken that someone in the chat did the math on my chances for success in this mission. This was the number they came up with. Zero, 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 four, six, five, seven, three. Repeating infinitely. Those were my chances of success. Why? Because this game randomly picks people to become hungry. You cannot create a pattern for success. You just need to be lucky. But I did it. I did it. Because f this game. Gerard, just calm down. Ah, screw it. F this game. There's no boss. There's no real final level. Just, no, moving on. All those hours, all those glitches, all that slow ass, sneaky ass sneaking, and what do you get? Well, after you beat the entire game, it doesn't even tell you to look under the options, because if you did, you unlocked the sneaking suit. Gerard, it's just a black suit. Yup. I mean, it's still the exact same character model, just black. Yup. Does it give you bonuses? Nope. Speed boost? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, no! <laughs> hey, Gerard, you did get all A rankings, right? Yes, I did, Greg. Well, you must get something. What do you get for getting all A rankings? There's an achievement. There's achievements in this game? There's an achievement you get called completist. That's it. That's it. That's all you get. That's it. That's all there is to what? it. There's nothing. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> 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 I can't, I, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, 
I, um, no, I can't, I can't, this is, I can't, I can't! <laughs> The majestic master of sneak invites you to go behind the mask. <laughs> and all you get for completing this game is a sneak suit. A black sneak suit. That's it. Well, you know what? Why don't we give this game its own black sneak suit? But before we do that, there's just a couple of things that we need to do in order to prep for this son of a gun. Let's do this. Guys, that felt really awesome to just mutilate that game. But unfortunately, guys, we are out of time. However, as always, oh, feel free to leave your positive and negative comments in the box below. Uh, if you missed last week's episode of the show, click right here to take a look. And if you're from the future, check right here for this episode next week. Speaking of next week's episode, there actually isn't going to be a new episode of The Completionist. We're going to be doing mailbag number three. We have a bunch of boxes and fan stuff that you guys sent to us to open up. And we're going to take some time to share it with you guys at home. But the reason why that we're doing this is because we're actually going to be at PAX East next week. So please come see us at PAX East. It's going to be a great time. We're going just to meet fans and, and to take pictures and autographs and, and really kind of anything else there is at PAX East for us to go do. So again, we're going to be Facebooking and, and, and live tweeting and tambling all over the place to kind of show everything there. Hi, high fiving. High fiving, yes. We will have high fives in hand to hand out to everyone. Now, if you excuse me, I, I want to kill the game again. We could just, we could watch the video again in slow I mean, motion. I, I know that like, I don't want to ruin the world of immersion for a second. We actually kept the fan copy for the guy who sent it to us. I kind of, I kind of want to burn this one too. No, we can't burn that one. I know, because he sent it to us. You know what? Let's just go to the same place that we got the other one, because we got it for like three bucks. Not even. It was like a dollar. It was a dollar. Yeah. Let's just get another one. Burn the hell out of the guy thing. Had, that guy had a lot, but I, I really want, I really want to do it again. Put the game down. Put the game down. Samurai, samurai emulation. Put the game down. Gently. Gently. Now let's go buy ourselves another copy and a triple whopper. All right, triple whopper. I actually prefer the Black Angus Steak Burger, only available for a limited time. <laughs>